Now, the last thing we need to do is to make graphs in Excel. So that's why I said you need to do more than one count if and you need to basically analyze a whole question. Otherwise, you won't be able to make a graph that provides a complete picture. So if you analyzed only half the question, then please complete that. Um, you basically need a comparison of a question. You won't really be able to make a graph of something of the mode um, of the lives of after the internet access or something like that. Maybe mode versus max or min, but uh, this is actually better. So let's make one graph together. You need to make, let's see how many. Let's just double check this. So graphs, you need to have at least two meaningful relevant graphs. I prefer three and I'm going to show you why just now. Um, you need appropriate types of graphs um, they're easy to interpret and they need to have correct use of titles, labels, grid lines and legends. So um, the reason why I think three are easier or better is in phase three you need to actually make three findings, claims or arguments, okay, based on your research in phase two. And really the easiest thing to make this based on rather than using something out of access is to actually do this based on something in Excel, um, which is easier to prove if you have something in a graph. So this is really easier to do it this way. So try to make three relevant graphs. Okay, so we're going to select this like this, insert and go make a graph. Now, something like this is not suitable for a pie chart. A pie chart is when the total matters and the percentage of the total. Okay, here it's comparing the monthly spend. It's comparing a number. So a number of how much they spend per month. So there isn't a total um, of how much they could have spent. So they, this is not relevant in a pie chart. So either a column chart or a bar chart would be better. So let's do that. So firstly, we need to change the title that it's much more um, descriptive. So uh, I'll have to say something like uh, per gender spend, uh, monthly spend on uh, e-commerce, for example. So make sure that the heading or the title is actually more descriptive and you can actually almost include the original question or at least expand on the original question because yeah it has to be clear what the original question was you have to have data labels on every single chart there's no guidelines as to what they need to look like, but there has to be data labels, okay? There also has to be access titles, okay? Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be both. I mean, this actually is descriptive, so you can actually only put in an access title for the numbers. So um, there you would probably put in something like uh, monthly spend, but put in at least one of the access titles. Um, and check if the grid lines are sufficient. Check if you maybe need to put in some more grid lines. Uh, are, are minor grid lines useful maybe? Yeah, I think this might actually add to that. Uh, and see if the one of the chart designs might be a bit nicer. If one of these, oh, this actually looks quite nice. But whatever chart design you need, you use, you need to use a similar one for all of the charts. So let's say I choose this one, I'm going to change the, let's see if I can find colors that's similar to, yeah, the other ones I want, then the other charts I need to make also needs to look close to, like, close to this, okay, but the, no, I definitely need grid lines for this, um, let's put minor in as well, so let's just double check what we need to have, um, the titles are cor used correctly, so I've expanded on the title. Um, I've put in data labels, okay? I've checked that there are enough grid lines. And um, a legend is only necessary when you are comparing two sets of data. So if I had, um, if I had done an average ifs where I actually did 
a gender and I did a comparison based on if they play games. Um, so it was the female game players and the male game players and I had basically two columns here comparing it, them then a legend would be important or in a pie chart let's say because uh, this is a pie chart I mean the number of game players versus non-game players that would be suitable so here I could a, a legend is useful this is a legend remember um, and here data labels would also be useful but data labels uh, in a pie chart is never good to just have a number it's much better to have percentage so I would say try to Remember, you can change it to percentage over here, more options. Oh, come on. Click it once so that they're both selected. Format data labels. Make it percentage, not value. Okay. And then position outside so that you can see it clearly. And change the, um, just change the title so that it's close to um, what the original question was. Uh, number of respondents who play games. Something like that. And then we'll have to change the colors again, that it's close to what we had. Something like that is nicer. Um, that actually fits better based on what I have here. My titles are clear, clear enough. I think I prefer this on this side. Yeah, that looks nice. And just expand on the title. So these, I then need to put on their own sheet called graphs and I'm going to go and move them move as an object in graphs and then I'll just put it nicely in the top and the same here move as an object in graphs now the reason I do it like that is so that I'm 100% sure that is that it is still a chart that it is not ch that it's not changed to a picture because what some people do is they copy it and then somehow when they paste it it changes into a picture and then you can't get any marks for it so please be careful when you do that now the last thing because basically excel is done now but there's one last mark that you can get it's a lot of work but you can get it there's a mark that says Analysis includes other relevant appropriate data in addition to the questionnaire or survey data. All right, so this is one mark. It's up to you if you want to do this. It's a lot of effort for one mark, but if you're aiming for full marks, then you need to do this. So if you're going to do this, if you're not, please don't do this. But if you're going to do this for that one extra mark, go to new sheet and say other data. And now you need to find other data to an analyze. Okay, the easiest way that or the easiest thing that I would suggest to do is to actually go and look in your phase one research and see if you can find somewhere where there's actually, okay, here it says flowers need six hours of full sun each day. So um, I need to actually put in a little reference to which source that was from. So source and I need to paste that URL. Oh, wrong one, this one. So let's just copy that URL. And uh, so six hours of full sun in a 24 hour day. And I'll say, uh, sun hours full day and then you can maybe work out what the percentage is so that would be that divided by that um, percentage per day percentage of sun or something like that there you go there I can get one mark all right but I can't help you more than that you need to figure out something from your original articles in phase one figure out something that you can do to get that one extra mark um, so you need to look for some stats something that refers to numbers or statistics in your original data in phase one that you can actually do an additional calculation on and that requires some creativity so if you want to do that you can get that one extra mark